After recently buying a SanDisk Extreme Pro 2TB Thunderbolt SSD, I wanted to see whether or not this new super speed SSD would actually make a noticeable difference when editing videos for YouTube. This was the fourth SSD that I've owned, and these SSDs all are of varying different speeds. So I wanted to organize a bit of a head-to-head -head comparison and share my findings with you, because possibly you're buying an SSD which is much faster than your actual needs. After I finished a recent project, I copied the project folder along with all of the video assets to each of the SSDs that I own. Now, the SSDs in this comparison are as follows. A Western Digital My Passport SSD, 512 gigabytes of storage. A Samsung T7 SSD, one terabyte of storage. A Samsung QVO SATA SSD inside of an Orico USB enclosure, and I did a video about building this hard drive or this external drive, and I'll have a link to that video up here for you guys. And of course, I had it on the newest SSD that I owned, the SanDisk Extreme V2 two terabyte SSD. The idea behind this was quite simple. I just spent a lot of money on a faster external SSD. Would I have done better buying a larger capacity, slower SSD, or is the performance I'm gonna get from this new SSD somehow superior to that of the other SSDs I have? Now, when doing this test, I wanted to keep things equal. I let the computer cool down for 15 minutes in between each test. I tried to use the same Thunderbolt 3 cable among all three of these drives. And for the USB-A drive I had, I just used a normal USB-C to USB 3.0 uh, converter. All of these drives had at least 50% of their storage capacity empty, and this is what I did. I exported each of the videos to the drive it was being read off of. I wanted to keep all of the variables as simple as possible, and thus this would test the read and the write speed, hopefully, of these drives. And it's just kind of the way I naturally use these SSDs day to day. Now, it's worth mentioning that I'm not putting these drives through the most demanding multi-layer 4K timeline. This is a relatively simple video on a 1080p timeline with a couple layers of 4K video and effects. And while I occasionally do multi-camera editing, the majority of the content that I make on YouTube is one to two layers of 4K video going on to a 1080p or sometimes 2K timeline with a conversion LUT and then a second color grading effect on top of it. And it's kind of what the you guys see here, this kind of YouTube video content and the kind of content that I understand a lot of people want to make. Now, after running these tests, I just did the export once and I timed it and my findings weren't shocking. For relatively simple video editing tasks that many if not most YouTubers want to do, spending more money on a faster drive isn't going to directly affect your rendering speeds or workflow. In my example here, all of these tests finished within 10 seconds or so of each other, and I'm sure if I'd had more demanding workflows or more layers of 4K video, I might have seen a difference. Like, for example, uh, if you are doing multi-camera 4K video going onto one timeline, I would say that that is useful. Or if you're trying to do Instagram content with multiple 4K clips stacked vertically, like we kind of see right now on Instagram, and I'll give you guys an example of that up here, uh, you could definitely see a slowdown because you're having to read more 4K streams at once. But this is kind of a, not necessarily a fringe, uh, example of this, but it's definitely not the most like stressful thing that you're going to do on an NLE, uh, especially if you're doing like multi-camera stuff, which I have found to be very drive speed dependent as it's simultaneously reading from multiple drives. Now, this isn't to say that spending more money on a faster drive is wasteful. You just might not be bottlenecked at your drive's maximum speeds right now, and thus just getting your footage onto an SSD in general is probably going to fix any of the bottlenecks that you have. I know that for some people, editing red raw footage, possibly editing um, like compressed raw footage uh, off of something like a black magic camera, you might need to have faster drives in order to read that footage off of that drive and then put that into your NLE. But in general, for a lot of content creators here on YouTube looking to maybe buy their first or their second SSD, I would highly suggest getting a SATA SSD like I did and either building your own enclosure or, someone driving by, sorry, 
or buying uh, SATA SSDs because then you could put that into a RAID enclosure and you could build off that later down the line instead of having a bunch of Thunderbolt drives like what I have. Hopefully you guys can learn from that, not make the same mistakes I did. And if you guys wanna buy one of these external hard drive holders, I'll have a link in the description for you guys where you can pick those up. I absolutely love it when taking my laptop on the go. After I recently bought a SanDisk Extreme Pro 2 terabyte after I recently bought a SanDisk Extreme Pro 2 terabyte USB-C folder along with all of the video assets and all of the hard after, after recently buying a SanDisk Extreme Pro 2 terabyte 